Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Linux Guide. Today we're on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS on a server. A lot of people don't want to ever look at this screen because this is a terminal. If you're ever going to use a server, you're probably going to have to look at this some. But today's episode is about how to only look at it for a short time to install a graphical interface and then only look at a graphical interface. Let's get started. What we're going to do is log in. And once you're logged in, you need to be on a user that has root access. So make sure you're on a, a user that can do this. First thing we're going to do is run update. So sudo apt update and, and sudo apt upgrade. So let's get all that new software and everything out of the way right now. So running this command, we can do that. Okay, now that we're all up to date, which is very important, you want to make sure you're using the most recent stuff we're going to go ahead and install the XFCE desktop for our Ubuntu server. XFCE, mainly because it's lightweight and pretty configurable, so we can make it look pretty cool. So to do this, you're going to want to install another program. This program is called TaskCell. A lot of people online call it Taskel. I don't like that because then you think that there's not a second S. It's T-A-S-K-S-E-L. So let's go ahead and install this, and basically this is the lazy way to install XFCE Desktop. You could actually install XFCE, you could install LightDM, and then the whisker menu plugin to make it feel like Xubuntu, but TaskCell lets us do this in one swift motion. So let's install TaskCell and I'll show you how to use it. Alright, now that it's installed, sudo task cell and it'll give you this GUI like interface where we can interact with our computer and install a whole bunch of things here there's a lot of stuff that it can do directly from this so what we're gonna do is this xubuntu desktop so you navigate using the arrow keys and you can select xubuntu desktop by hitting the space bar we're gonna use xubuntu desktop because xfce is very lightweight but it's also powerful enough that we can utilize it very well for a server. Another added benefit to using the XFCE desktop environment is we can use X2Go to remote control our server from other machines over SSH. So tab to get to OK and hit enter and let's wait for it to install. One thing I really like about the TaskSell installation, it gives you a progress bar and it does everything for you. You see it's going to download 1036 files and it's also going to install and configure them all. Okay, now that XFCE has been installed, all we gotta do is reboot our computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with sudo reboot. And here we are after our reboot and you'll see there's actually a login screen now. We have a graphical interface, so let's log in. And here we are on Xubuntu. It's got the Xubuntu desktop. It's got the whisker menu. Let's go do a little bit of more tweaking to this so that it looks just exactly how we want it. So let's go ahead and edit this whisker menu. And I always like the whisker menu to have a little bit of opacity. So I'll do 90%. And I'll do panel button. And I'm going to say icon and title. And I like it to say menu. And I always leave the space here because it just looks a little bit better up there. And I like that. This is really nice for a server because you can click stuff and get to it very easy. And finally, I usually like this show icons. So you can click the stuff over here or the show list. Now I've used both of these fairly often. I'm a big fan of the show icons option here so that it shows icons over here. The main reason is because then I can fill this with my favorites and I can just click whatever I need real quick. So if I wanted to get in a terminal on my server, I can just click terminal and it'll open my terminal. The next thing I'm going to configure is the Windows. So we'll click Window Manager. This actually comes with a lot of things. You can play around and look and find the ones you like. I'm going to go ahead and use Numix since it comes with this and I like Numix. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit Appearance, which we can again get to in the Whisker menu. And I'm just going to use Numix again because I think that this is a nice pack. We can change the icons. I'm going to leave the elementary XFCE icons fine. Elementary OS icons are nice. That's about it. You can go ahead and change the background too if you like, but you see that everything's pretty functional. We have access to everything that we need. 
all of our basic applications are already installed and now we can manage our server from here so I went ahead and checked the system status of SSH to see if it's running and it is and you can see now I can do all of this right here in a graphical interface on my server instead of through the terminal window which is really honestly just a much bigger pain to use. The other added benefit, now I can use X2Go, which is a program that I'll cover in another video at a later time. If you guys want to see it, let me know if you want to see it. And you can remote control this server, and it'll look just like this. So you can get on it and have multiple instances of multiple users logged into XFCE, and it will look like this. And that's another added benefit of having a graphical interface running on your server because now everyone can access it. If we open up an HTOP instance here, you can see I only have four gigs of RAM and I have two CPU cores in the system, but I'm just not even hardly, I, I'm idling at hardly anything on the CPU cores and I'm using only 566 megs of RAM, so this could even run on a really old computer and it would run fine. As always, thank you for watching the Linux Guy. Please follow us on LBRY and subscribe on BitChute, and we'll see you in the next video.